I'm the new sustainability director, and I've been in the sustainability office for five years. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I feel like I've learned a lot from everyone already. And I'm really excited that Ronnie and I agree on so much. That means you're going to get recruited to do a lot of help. <laughs> well, in our next campus sustainability plan, Ronnie, he has, he has lots of time. So, um, this is, what's the sustainability office? So, we're housed in the operational side of the house. That means we're under business and administrative services. Who else falls under that? Um, housing, colleges, dining, physical plant, um, both, both kinds of operational operational organizations within the university. So uh, what I want to talk about is our campus sustainability plan. All the UC campuses have one. Our use the banana slopes campus sustainability plan. Where have we been and where do we go from here? Well, as you can see our banana slug in this picture is about to, you know, fly off his, uh, his mossy cliff there and <laughs> figure out how to create a path for the banana slug to go forward. So what do we have going for us at UC Santa Cruz? What are we doing well? Sustainability is a core value. This is part of what Miriam was talking about, even in the Santa Cruz community. Sustainability, however you define that, is definitely seen as a core value. It's a core value for our institution as well. It's written within the Chancellor's mission and vision statement. It's been traditionally environmental conservation sustainability. We can talk more about that, uh, how that definition is evolving. It was a pioneering and student-driven movement. Um, transportation tax, I know tax gets unpopular for parking prices, but they do a lot more than that. Um, they, they were talking about alternative transportation and things like coming up with the bike shuttle program long before sustainability was even a word here. Uh, our Center for Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems is a farm has an internationally renowned uh, organic farming training program. There's a community supported agriculture program that comes out of there. There's a direct connection with how much food is, is grown to, for the dining halls for students to eat on campus. I mean, there's, there's some really revolutionary stuff going on there. Um, students helped drive out the Dexo Marriott, which is a big corporation that used to run dining, until students said, uh-uh, we want to do it ourselves and do it better. So that's something that we do really well at this campus and we're continuing to do well on many levels. We have a really strong connection to teaching and research on this campus. There are a lot of ways we can connect the operational advancements we need to make it better with our teaching and what's going on in the classroom. We have some awesome academic programs and majors, and now a sustainability minor that uh, helps students get those skills and that knowledge of what's going on globally to environmentally that we, we need to improve. Um, we are really lucky that all 10 UC campuses and med centers have um, strong leadership at the UC Office of the President level. We did not have that before Janet Napolitano was president. So I know there's a lot of controversy around her role as presidency and who she is and what she's accomplished. She's been a really strong advocate for um, sustainability. And sometimes it does take leadership from the top to push something to help the student advocacy from the bottom actually get somewhere. So I think that's been positive. Um, recently, like, she's put on a high level as priorities are carbon neutrality. Does anybody know what year we're supposed to be carbon neutral by? 2025. I don't know if you know that, Jameson. <laughs> That's his job. And um, the Global Food Initiative, which has helped us become a leader in um, teaching about food equity and food security issues. And this is something that we're, this relates a lot to what Miriam was talking about. We're starting to figure out what it means to have a more culturally inclusive movement on this campus. Um, People of Color Sustainability Collective, we've got the coordinator right here, Adriana Venturia. Uh, started last year with a student-based movement. They're talking a lot more about what are the experiences of students of color within sustainability on this campus and what do we need to do to really be embracing different cultural notions as we move forward and try to become more sustainable operationally and as a society. So there's, we're starting to have that conversation. It's a really important conversation. There's also research that's going to be coming out next year talking about people's experiences and what we can really do to reframe this movement. So I'd be interested in hearing people's perspectives about that. So, oh, and quickly, I want to point out the person in the toilet over here, the leaking toilet mascot, <laughs> there is a student in there, and we'll talk about her later. Her name is Lindsay Edelman, uh, with Sammy the Slug. 
So the Campus Sustainability Plan, what's the Campus Sustainability Plan? Ronnie already talked about it a little bit. We had nine very operational topic areas. One was awareness and education and engagement, uh, and which this workshop is actually part of fulfilling the goals there. And then the, a lot of them are really operational, like water, buildings, energy, food, transportation, procurement, things like that. It was developed collaboratively. It was definitely a collaborative process. And I will say that it was mostly staff. And I think that's something that we're going to be able to improve upon this next round. In case you didn't notice, 2013 to 2016 is this current campus sustainability plan, which means we're about to launch the process to create a new one. So there's opportunities abound here to do it better the next time around. I think we did a pretty good job. I think we want to definitely want to have more faculty and more student engagement this time. It was vetted by the campus administration. That means that it, it went up through the chain and the right people looked at it to, said, yeah, to say yes, you can put UCSD's name on this and see how you can make these things go forward. That, that vetting didn't come with money. It didn't say here's all the money to go do all those things, but they said that it's representative of our values and what we'd like to achieve. We <coughs> track performance me metrics for different topics. We report annually, both on the campus level and the UC system-wide level, on how we're doing in every single topic area. Um, I've, I have links here. I'm assuming we can share the, the presentations afterwards with <coughs> anyone who um, signed in or that we have contact information for. If you want to know specifically like how the UCSD is doing in comparison to Berkeley and emissions and water usage and things like that, we, all that exists online. I've got those links here. And we have a little bit of funding to support implementation of things in the campus sustainability plan. And it's not much. A lot of that is from the carbon fund. There's also other student fee measures that support um, student and staff and faculty projects. And um, they may sound like big numbers individually, like over $100,000 in some of these funds. But when it really comes down to the billions of dollars worth of housing that's coming, that you know, they're kind of drops in the bucket. So th that's. Um, that's kind of where we're at. And I just wanted to show you what the Campus Sustainability Plan looks like for each topic. There's an overall introduction. Uh, there were some goals and objectives set specifically for each uh, area and some metrics that were tracked. Like over here, uh, the bar chart, which you can't really see, but that's how much water, potable water is being consumed for weighted campus users. And that's just a fancy way of saying how do you lump faculty and students and part-time staff into this being one person when you're representing data. And you can see the trend has been going down immensely in water. So this is one of the places we're doing well. So overall, what are, what are just some overall accomplishments? This is not a, com an, a comprehensive list by any means, um, but just to give you some basic highlights of what's been going on over the past three to five years. Water, we had a 25% reduction in use from our 2013 baseline for two years in a row because of the drought. Sometimes taking, care, taking advantage of a good emergency can be a positive thing. We massively reduced our water usage. There's still some things we can do a lot better. Um, we have really good data tracking. We have over 500 water meters on campus attached to specific buildings. It's, it's connected to an online system where the building managers can look and see if anything's leaking hour by hour, how much is being used, how much is being wasted. UCLA, I think last I heard they have four meters on for the entire campus. Think about that. That means they have no idea who's using the water where. So we're doing really well in this area. Um, we have a pilot rainwater catchment system that fl flushes two toilets at Oper. Some of you may be familiar with that. The idea is students through the engineering program helped um, develop and implement that. That was really cool. That's just one, one little system that flushes two toilets. We gotta do a lot better than that. So we'll talk more about what we can do better. Energy, uh, UC has um, gotten smart and become their own energy services provider, which means we don't have to get everything from PG&E now. UC has found some smart ways to do it, and they recently procured 60% of our energy is gonna come from solar to several campuses, and we're one of them. We also um, have created a climate and energy strategy that the, those recommendations are about to become public within the next few months, which means what doing deep level analysis to find out where do we still need to replace light fixtures and do energy saving um, projects and things like where, where do we want to put solar, how do we meet a bunch of regulatory requirements that are coming down the line. UCSD falls under cap and trade, all the UCs do, most people don't know that. So there's not only are there environmental impacts of not, not doing the right thing, there's also 
uh, financial impacts, and sometimes that speaks to the administration. <laughs> um, food, we're doing some pretty awesome things there. I already talked a little bit about that. Academics and research, Ronnie helped start, well, really, he started a sustainability minor this year. That's exciting. We'll see how that builds up and creates more opportunities for a, a wider variety of students to get involved in, in this type of learning and work. The um, Sustainability Living Learning Laboratory, called the S Lab on campus. There's an outdoor space at the Arboretum, there's an indoor space and laboratory at Teeman or Teeman? Yeah. Um, that's, that's really exciting and gaining a lot of traction. We'll see where that goes and creates hands on space for students to do some really innovative work. It would be cool to be connecting that with some of the operational goals we need to achieve, right? Um, zero waste, our data has also improved a lot there, almost as good as the water data. Uh, we have some pretty innovative technology that most other, no other campuses have actually. They're just starting to come and check out our model to see how to do it. There's scales on the dump trucks and they know exactly how much things weigh. We can tell exactly how much compost we're taking versus refuse and we know how much, ref how much stuff is in the refuse and trash that needs to come out to be recycled or composted instead. So, um, and like I said, we have, we've had minimal amount of funding which has been helpful for small scale projects. So operationally, what do we need to do better? Buildings and new construction, that's been brought up in a couple other presentations where there's several hundred beds that we need to build within the next, I don't want to say the wrong number, but I, I want to say it's within five years. Um, sorry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, didn't, we needed to build them yesterday, but they're going to be built <laughs> within the next few years. Um, we need to increase the efficiency of the buildings that we already have. Never mind the buildings that we're going to build. If we have any hope of reaching carbon neutrality, they need to be built at net zero, which means solar panels everywhere, super tight envelope that we're basically replacing the emissions we're creating by living in them. We need to have a whole, thinking about the whole water system that we're setting up for that, look for non potable water sources. That tiny rainwater catchment system at Oprah's is all we have. That's it. it some, you know, it's got its technical issues like anything else, and that's why it's a pilot. <laughs> um, so you can learn from those things. So th these are huge opportunities for students to get involved in this work and find some innovative research to make things that do work. Um, waste, we need to expand compost infrastructure. We've got it at dining, we've got it at all the food service centers on campus. Awesome start. We need, we need to get it out way further than that. A third of what's in our trash is compostable stuff. It's really inexcusable. We don't need to have organics in the landfill as a society. It's inexcusable, unacceptable, we need to be addressing that problem as soon as possible. Um, and funding, all of these things cost money and we, the UC at the system-wide level, at the UCOP level and on campus is looking at what are some creative funding mechanisms that we, that we can use to finance things, sustainability, like there's, there's things, um, there's research being done on a, a concept of a carbon tax, what, what could that look like if different units were uh, had to pay a certain amount of money just to automatically go to these projects. You know, we're far from doing something like that, but that's, those are research projects that are happening around how effective those are. Municipalities are looking into that. Operational funding is dry, drying up just to do our basic operations to create classrooms enough to accommodate students. So <coughs> it's even harder to justify using operational funds to do this innovative, sustainable work at this, at this time right now where we are in the budget. And this uh, picture is of the toilet at Oprah's, where we are currently using rainwater. So just to take a step back a little bit, where does UCSC fit in this bigger picture? When I'm talking about UCSC operations, why is that important and how does that fit in the bigger picture of what's going on with climate change in the world? So if we look at this, we've got an Earth Systems column, right? That's what's going on with climate change in the world. That's what our academic programs support and teach about. There's lots of innovative research happening there. Infrastructure systems is where we're starting to talk about operations. These are the things that support and also contribute negatively to impacting the earth systems, such as energy supply, material supply, food supply, water, building construction, building operations. That's what the sustainability office is working with. Everybody on campus to try to figure out how to make all those function better to have less impact, potentially positive impact on the earth systems. 
And then this is where we fall, like as an institution. This is, this is who we are. We're the organizational system. The university is very complicated. It's not just one chancellor making decisions about how things work. Um, it's, it's that's the leadership. It's also just the general culture of what sustainability means and what, how the organizational organization functions. There's <coughs> management structures. There's policies that contribute to this. There's information and technology systems. There's staff. There's some things missing on here. There's staff. There's faculty. There's research. There's innovation. There's academic courses. We're a really complex organizational structure, and this is part of what Ronnie's talking about when he says learn how to get the tools and actions to be part of this structure productively and make positive impact because this is where a lot of the change is going to happen not only in, at the university at UCSC but out there in the world once you graduate is knowing how to navigate this and help make this go so that all this can happen and then obviously the individual system is you know where, where your personal values and how do you grow in relation to all of these so Elise Sharp is um, Somewhat, she was the first sustainability manager at Harvard, and she, she developed a whole theory around um, organizational change management in relation to sustainability and environmental progress specifically, and if, if you're interested in looking her up, you can find some pretty cool literature on her. So, UCSC, you've got an idea of where we are, or where I think we are, and where we need to go from here. How do we approach the next campus sustainability plan? We need to engage more community and campus student faculty and staff stakeholders in the sustainability goal setting so that it's really comprehensive and considers what's going on in the community, like what Miriam was talking about. We gotta get creative with financial resources. Um, uh, I'm hiring a new person to work in our office. They're gonna have a tiny little sliver of their job that we're sticking in grant writing and fundraising. We'll see how that goes, but there probably needs to be a lot more than that going on. So lots of room for discussion there. We've got to embrace different cultural notions of what it means to be sustainable. I think what Miriam said about the Santa Cruz community is right on in a lot of ways. It reflects what UC Santa Cruz has, has also been known for is traditional environmental ecological sustainability. And there, it's, there's a lot more things we can be doing, a lot more ways we can be thinking about it, and it's a lot more than just who could buy the best Prius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, we, Priorities shift at the UC system line and the state level. The drought wasn't a big deal when we first drafted that campus sustainability plan. We had to focus a lot of work on that in the past two years, so it took away from other things we were, had been working on. Same thing with carbon neutrality. Things change, <coughs> important climate priorities change, and we gotta go with the flow there. Behavioral change and operational infrastructure are equally important. They're not mutually exclusive, they go very much together. Um, to give one example on rolling out zero waste infrastructure, I was dismayed at how um, people who I thought personally, you know, said they valued basic uh, support of the environment and valued our zero waste goals didn't want composting anywhere near their office. No way. So you don't want to deal with smell, you don't want to deal with noise, you don't want to deal with fruit flies. So that there's some there's some cultural and notions there and, and concepts that people have and expectations of, of what's okay in their space and it takes time to work through that. Um, that's adaptive organizational change, there's a concept for that and so we've got to embrace that concept, work with people to get there so we can get to the next level but at the same time we've got to push the boundaries when we can. And last but not least, I'm almost done, we've got to connect our operational goals to the campus mission of teaching and research. It, that's just key to the success. If we're going to make this work, we need to be also be educating. If we're going to make UCSC carbon neutral, we also have to be educating the students who can go out in the world and help the world be carbon neutral as well. And I want to give an example. Remember the, the student in the toilet? Well, this, that's Lindsay Edelman. <laughs> she now works for the city of Santa Cruz Water Conservation Office. So there's examples of where this is already happening. So she um, wrote to me and said, so she, was, she graduated last year. She was a cognitive science major and Spanish language studies minor. Um, my experience working in the sustainability office taught me that I did not have to fear or settle with the impacts of an overwhelming large scale problem. I'm sure lots of people feel that weight, right? Rather, I could take control of the situation on a smaller, more personal level that was at my university. Grow confidence and success by granting me a way to make change by tackling low hanging fruit in my academic community and later support me in my endeavors of instituting more change working at the city's water conservation office. 
This is what Ronnie's talking about. Don't you want your faith in this? <laughs> yeah, you do. And the, honestly, the, that's just one example of one student who worked in our office. There's Ideas Program is, is cranking out students like this. Student Environmental Center has a ton of opportunities like this. People of Color <coughs> Sustainability Collective is starting to be awesome. Actually, Adriana, Adriana was a student who graduated and now is the coordinator of that. Um, we have PhD program graduates who helped develop the climate and energy strategy. They started a company in town called EcoShift. Um, we have students on the Carbon Fund learning about funding systems. The Sustainability Living Laboratory is being developed. I mean, the list goes on and the opportunities abound. Um, and if we're going to reach these ambitious goals like zero waste by 2020 and carbon neutrality by 2025, I want there to be hundreds of students behind with stories like this behind how we got there. So, I'll end on this note, kind of a hopeful note. Um, so Janet Napolitano, when she said the Carbon Neutrality Initiative by 2025, said that we're the, we are the University of California and there's no reason that the UC can't lead the world in this endeavor, as it has in so many others. So I just want to flip that a little bit and say that we are the UC, University of California Santa Cruz. And there's no reason that the nano slugs can't leave the UC system in this quest as we have in so many others. Now, that was a quote from me. <laughs> and, uh, and there's our banana slug no longer falling off the cliff, so let's do 